Good afternoon, uh, everyone. I would like to uh, today. I would like to share some uh, of our recent progress on uh, uh, Stereosic version two. Uh, I think you already know a lot of uh, our progress of uh, version one, but uh, the version two, uh, we will release a new version that will give you a better cellular resolution as well as uh, multi omic data uh, information. So. Uh, Firstly, I think um, the recent few years, the uh, uh, stereo sick the spatial uh, transcripts and the other related technologies has been uh, have a, a great uh, progress in recent years and the list as a, a method of year in 2020 by Nature Methods. And talking about um, the technology we developed, uh, we are taking uh, the advantage of our uh, sequencing technology, we call it DMB and uh, 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 pattern array chips to generate these uh, like nanoscale resolutions. And we also have a flexible uh, field of view, which means we can expand it from a uh, sample size from one millimeters time to uh, 13 millimeters, uh, centimeters uh, uh, in time. So that's why uh, you can see that uh, our uh, uh, technology has been significantly uh, solved uh, challenges in resolution, capture area, and capture efficiency. Uh, if you compare that, uh, our spore size is uh, about 2 point, uh, 0 0.22 uh, micrometers, and the center to center distance is around 0 0.5 uh, micrometers, and, and also have a, a much larger field of view. Uh, when you compare the uh, capture efficiency, uh, talking about gene numbers or UMI numbers, we all have like the 20 to 100 times higher than all the other uh, ex existing technology. So uh, when you compare in detail that, you will see that the, our Stereosic version one has a very high uh, capture efficiency and also give you a very better view, uh, visualization morphology of the, uh, of, of the genes in the tissue. Uh, it's much closer to the uh, fish results. And uh, uh, when you ask why uh, we have a better uh, visualizations is because uh, we actually uh, have less uh, diffusions uh, compared to other technology. When you are using the uh, nuclear RNA and the mitochondrial RNA uh, positions in the one cells, you will see that these two uh, different sources of RNA are located in different regions, which means our diffusion is within uh, subcellular uh, resolution. And we also compare our uh, the few diffusion with uh, Murphy's technology. Uh, and uh, uh, we use in the VIP transcripts in the single VIP plus uh, positive uh, inhibitory neurons, we're showing that we actually have the similar, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the diffusion results as a uh, Murphy's. So that's why uh, we, could have, we could realize the real uh, cellular resolutions. Then people will ask why you need cellular resolutions. If you look at uh, these two uh, figures, figures C, C and D, you will find that if you're using the bin, uh, uh, like a square uh, uh, segmenta segmentations, uh, you can only using marker genes to identify what region it is. And if you have a cellular uh, segmentation, cell uh, segmentations, you were able to find out all the heterogeneity of that, that region. So which means the cellular uh, uh, segmentation gave you much more information compared to the, um, the square segmentation. So uh, that's why we're using uh, the Storistic version one uh, already generated our first batch of results uh, in the STOC consortiums. Uh, and uh, uh, four already released in the uh, cell press community uh, 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 consortium uh, webpage and uh, four still in the peer review process. I want to highlight four of them. One is the, uh, the, the mouse organ genesis. So we are not only uh, ch uh, chose different time of the embryo genesis, we also uh, have, uh, uh, have different, uh, different positions of sections of each stage. And that's why we generate uh, the most comprehensive and the, the biggest data set for the uh, mouse organ genesis in the single cell resolutions. So I, which means you can not only find out all the cell atlas 
of the mouse organ genesis. Also, you can also identify the locations, the positions of each cells. So you were using this information to understand even for the same cell types, they are located in different positions. Actually, they are slightly changed in their cell fate and the cell uh, expression patterns. Uh, so this gives you much better uh, information of the uh, spatial diversification of cell types at the whole embryo scale. And they also give you uh, information to understand the cell fate dynamics. For example, we are using uh, dorsal middle brain development part to understand the uh, cell fate uh, progress, cell fate uh, dynamics. So you will see the spatial heterogeneity in the progenic cell types and also genes associated with those uh, progenic cell cells. And we did the same thing uh, in the zebrafish, but in zebrafish, they, because the, the embryo genesis is so fast, so we have to take samples by hours. So, and uh, we not only generate the, uh, the, all the cell, cell types, single cell information of all the, uh, the whole embryo genesis, we also build up the cell fate linear tree and uh, uh, tracing uh, how this, the, 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 the most important genes that make the uh, decisions of the cell fate and cell uh, uh, embryo genesis progression. And we did the same, same thing for the uh, Drosophila embryos and the larvas. So uh, you will find that we are, because the, um, the embryo body was so small, so we, we actually cut each, uh, each pieces of the, uh, the, the, the body and the, reconstruct the 3D structures of the whole embryo genesis. And we did the same thing in, uh, in the plant. We using the uh, uh, I write Dobbs' leaves, for example. Uh, you will find that uh, we we taking the information of cell wall, and we using cell wall uh, cell wall uh, imaging to help us to I, I, uh, do the segmentation of the single cells. And the this the position information plus the single cell information in the plant uh, uh, leaves give us uh, a much better understanding of uh, of our knowledge before and. The, uh, showing that different positions of the, even the same cell types actually uh, have slightly different biological functions, which means the uh, position uh, and the cell types is very important for the uh, spatial development of the uh, trajectory of the uh, uh, cells. However, uh, uh, the stereotic version one still have a lot of limits, but we think uh, there's a lot of things we have to solve. The first thing is that at the current stage, we only can do the fresh frozen samples. But uh, in a lot of studies, we won't able to get that perfect samples. So well, the new versions of technology can be compatible with more sample types, for example, uh, PFA prefix samples, FFP samples. And the second major challenge uh, is that, uh, can we do different omics at the same time uh, on the, in the same tissue slides. Before we do uh, HG staining and the transcriptome different uh, in, the, in, the, in the neighboring uh, slides, but this, we are still missing a lot of information. We are able to do a lot of other information on the same slides is a big challenge. And currently, the, because the stereotic generates so much data, the, bioinformatic tools is not still not that powerful. And when we do 3D visualizations, when we do uh, cell beam segmentations, we still have a lot of challenge. So we are we able to generate a better uh, software to deal with such large information? So um, we now uh, generate a new technology uh, uh, and then we have a very, we have a, a very significant upgrade from the version one to version two. And we also we will release a new uh, uh, software tools, the StereoPi version one. So in the new uh, versions, we, want, we need this new uh, uh, version to be able to compatible with PFA, actually staining uh, immunofluorescent FFP processings. And we, will, we, can, we should, also do all this library prep fully automated. So 
make all the, this process more robust and more easier for users. And we want to remodeling the stereotypic chips, make, the, uh, you, make them more user friendly. And we need to change reaction buffers, reaction systems to make it more efficient. We want to make the library uh, uh, prep more optimized, uh, make it much faster, easier with robust and more uh, tissue types. And we want our uh, softwares to be higher efficiency for big data. We can do cell segmentations and the 3D reconstructions much easier. So that's why we uh, build up this, uh, uh, the new versions. We already have a very uh, early results showing that it's very promising that the new uh, pipelines, new uh, protocols, we are able to uh, deal with PFA samples. Why PFA is important? Uh, here, I we show examples of uh, testicular tissues uh, because you know that in testes, the genes are expressed in a high, uh, high, 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 um, high level. Then you will have uh, um, diffusion issues. And because it contain a lot of like uh, uh, the, the, the tissues sometimes is also um, the morphology is difficult to preserve. So before we're using fresh tissues, uh, you will see that the, the tissue morphology is not good enough and the diffusion into the cavity of the uh, semi, seminal uh, tubes is very serious. But after we uh, prefix with PFA, because PRS, PFA will cross-link all the RNAs. So diffusion is less uh, compared to before and the morphology is much better. So this show that the PFA prefix will help the, tissue, the difficult tissues like uh, uh, tested tissues to make to, to preserve its uh, uh, morphology and also uh, control the diffusion. And you will also find that uh, we, are, we have confirmed this, map, this uh, new protocols are uh, uh, compatible uh, with different tissues. We, uh, it's actually very generate very robust results in different samples from in testing the kidney, spleen, and lung, and give out give out much 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 better uh, results and much better uh, cap, uh, cap, capture efficiency. And we also find another advantage using PFA uh, pre-processing. Uh, because PFA can do sterilizations and make the samples much easier to deal with uh, in a standard lab, lab instead of uh, biosafety lab. And because in clinical, uh, the FFP samples was most available samples. So we want the, this new version to be able to compatible with FFP samples. And our primary uh, results showing that uh, our new uh, protocols, uh, the stereosic version two, can uh, take FFP samples easily. So, uh, and we showing that using FFP samples, uh, the RNA, the diffusion is much less compared to before. So the RNA were visualized, visually uh, aggregated. So that's why we could use in this RNA abundance information to do the cell segmentation. And uh, uh, because the expression levels, uh, the capture efficiency is much higher and uh, uh, the RNA abundance is much better. So we can using this information to do single cell level uh, clusterings, can, which means it's possible in the future, this will replace the single cell RNA seq. And we also showing that uh, in, the, uh, in this uh, ver version two uh, new protocols, we have a, a much better RNA capture performance. And because we are not using poly A to capture the mRNA, so we can compatible with low RNA ring quality. Uh, here we're showing that even in a, a, like a ring lower than uh, three, uh, 3 3.2, 3 3.7, uh, we still can generate very good uh, capture results. And because uh, it's not using poly A, so we can do a target capture of gene panels. We can capture genes without poly A's, for example, genes from the bacteria. And we can also do five prime UTR region capture. And another uh, important features of the new versions is we are able to do the HE staining and the transcriptomics on the same slides. So uh, 
this will, uh, we already showing that this new protocols, uh, when you do the HV staining and the transcript on the same slides, give out very robust and uh, uh, stable uh, results. And we, we are also uh, released the, the new version that we can do immunofluorescent IF and the transcriptome on the same slide sections, which means you can using the traditional IF to find out the known biomarkers of the known cell types and also using the, uh, the transcriptomes to uh, distinguish the, no, the novel cell types. And one of the more important features of the new version is that we are going to uh, do uh, spatial proteomics and spatial transcriptomes in the same slides. So we're using the uh, DNA labeled antibodies uh, to uh, treat the uh, tissue slides and sequencing the DNA labels to identify the, uh, the spatial information of proteomics. Right now, we already have 20 protein panels available. And this preliminary results showing that we can simultaneously, simultaneously visualize the RNA and protein on the same sections. We, and we plan to expand it from 20 protein panels to uh, 1,000 uh, proteins. And more importantly, uh, we want to release this new version that it can do the whole process automatically. So we understand that current version, the version one, the process is, uh, is so long that uh, it's not easier to reproduce in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in any labs. So the automated, fully automated sample pro uh, processing systems will uh, able to automatically process the whole, uh, the whole pipelines from the post imaging to the library prep and to the sequencing and to the report. We'll have less than 30 minutes hands-on time. So, and have a 24 chips processing on the same time. So, which give a very high, uh, very good uh, uh, user-friend uh, solutions. And not only the, uh, the, the, the protocols, we also want to release uh, the version, uh, the, the new version of the uh, uh, bioinformatic tools to make the stereo-sick uh, data analysis much easier. This, uh, this information, the stereo pie, we, we, we trying to build up the software stereo pie to be able to have a higher performance for big data, faster and more user-friendly. And we, the stereo pie is designed for stereo-sick, uh, which means we can take in the higher resolution information, the cellular resolution and the large field of view information to do the analysis. The, the new release from version 0.2 to version one, we are able to do cell binning, cell segmentation, do the automatically data denoising, uh, cell clustering annotation and 3D reconstruction. So the, the new uh, ver uh, versions will do the spatial data denoising uh, and do the pattern identification much easier. And there will be new algorithms to do the spatial clustering uh, before we using single cell sequencing clustering soft bioinformatic tools, but we cannot taking, you, taking use of the uh, spatial information. So the new algorithm will uh, consider about the transcriptional information as well as spatial, spatial information uh, to do the uh, clustering, cell clustering, and uh, do the annotation of cell types. And uh, also trying to use in the new algorithms to identify the spatial variable gene detection. So the new uh, new version of the software we are able to do cell segmentation much easier. So we are build up a new algorithms for the cell uh, segmentations, and we are taking more samples and more tissue types before we can only do cell segmentation in only a few cell types, but we expand it now to uh, almost any cell type, uh, uh, tissue type. And the softwares will also support uh, single cell version, uh, single cell, cell visualizations and data analysis. And one of the most important features of the new software is we will support 
high resolution 3D reconstructions. The new software will take use of the block phase imaging to assess the reconstruction. And we generate a new file formats and do the restoration tools to do the uh, 3D reconstruction. And there will also be a new visualizations page, uh, the, the features uh, to do the uh, single cell resolution 3D visualization. So as a summary, uh, the new uh, release, the new upgrade will support uh, the, the new protocols that are compatible with PFA, FFP, HE staining, and all the other process pre-processing. And we will have a higher single cell resolution. And the, because we set up the novel uh, reagent uh, setup, so we are able to do the uh, cellular HE, uh, immunofluorescent, and uh, uh, protein omics uh, at the same time on the same tissue. Uh, and we will, at the beginning, we'll release 20 multi protein panels, and in future, we'll update to 1,000. And then the new software will have a better algorithm and tools. We will support the single cell segmentations in any tissues, and we will be able to support the 3D reconstruction features. And then all these new upgrades, the, the new version two and the new version one stereo pi, uh, we, are, uh, we are planned to release in end of this year. And already we we're already using these new uh, versions to do a lot of demo projects at the beginning. And uh, we uh, welcome all the experts and scientists to join our STOC. Uh, uh, visit our website, you will find all the information there. And uh, we welcome everyone to be part of this uh, consortium. Thank you.